Welcome back to the Crooked Spine Show. Today's talk is our first talk at the Gibson Center for 2023 in January that we did about getting back on track, about eating better, about finding a better exercise routine, about getting ourselves to a healthier state, especially after the holidays, after the new year. We, we all have a sense of where we want to be weight-wise, um, strength-wise, and that also correlates how we feel and how we look and also preventing injuries too in our, in our daily lives. So we talk about exactly in the first part of this workshop is kind of resetting ourselves and seeing where we are right now with our exercise routine and also our eating routine and what, we can, what can we do better for one too. And understanding that when we change something, it will make our bodies feel uncomfortable and that's part of the process of stressing your bodies to get to a healthier state, maybe physical, mental, psychological, or emotional. In this talk, we also talk about too, is how do we improve our, heat, our eating? We talk about logging foods, maybe subtracting one thing at a time, taking it slow, and giving yourself time to adapt to that new, if you want to call it stressor. Also, how do we exercise? What can we do that we like to do, and also do that more often over time, and even when we're doing simple things, such as can we do some stretching while we're watching some TV, um, while we're going to the store, can we walk instead of, uh, instead of going in our car all the time too? We do things like that to make our body healthier slowly over time to make it our normal routine, my friends. So enjoy talking, talk, my friends. Again, links to this in this uh, podcast, links to the actual YouTube channel, to podcast itself, to a problem in the previous podcast. So enjoy the week, my friend. Enjoy the year, my friends. Go Eagles, and we'll see you next week. I do this talk every uh, every month-ish. We take December off because of the holidays, you guys, as everyone knows. And this month is going to be how do we get back on track, yes. exercises, eating routines, after all the holidays, all the stuff that I threw away two weeks ago. Like, I don't even wear tamales or chocolates and like that. Get out of my, out of my fridge. We're done with it, right? Okay. And, and why do I why do I have this talk? Not you should, if you haven't seen it before, I usually do an exercise routine too with everything going on. I want to make sure we have our mindset ready. Okay, I've seen people come back now to my office because they went back to the gym, trying to get themselves fit again, and hurt themselves. They woke something up. Okay. I want to make sure our mindsets are okay with being a little uncomfortable as we get back to routine. How do we free that for you? Everyone's different. I, I can't. I don't know what you specifically, but what do you like to do? Okay, to get started for one too. What's a good standard way that we measure how healthy we are? What's okay. the standard way? That I can still get up and soak. Yes, good, good. Our motion, right, our movement. Okay. Is there a standard number of what we want to do weight-wise, okay, weight-wise, after the holidays? I gained about probably four or five pounds in the holidays. That's my normal. I got to lose maybe one and a half pounds left. Um, but we all go through certain ranges through the year of how much we weigh, how much we don't weigh. They may, use, may, use that, may not use that at all. But when you have something, a way to standardize where you want to be health-wise with your emotion, how you feel, how much your routine's like, how's your energy level, how many classes can you do here at the Gibson Center, how much can you do to make your overall body feel good and stay good? How do we start a routine to get ourselves healthy? So, on this form I gave you here, I'll post it to people watching the video, is how do you rate your, just personally, your activity level right now, and also where you want to be? When I say activity level, your exercise level, how much you move, okay? Or rate yourself, is it, See, after the holidays, mine is probably close to 7 or 8. I want to get up to maybe about a 9 or 10 again. My 9 and 10 is doing my workouts five days a week and also doing my, my hikes in the hills here about two days a week. Maybe go for maybe one bike right here and there too. But how do you figure out where we are now after the holidays, after 2022 Christmas holidays and New Year's, now 2023, how do you get to where, wherever you want to go, wherever you've been, and how do you get back to where you want to get back to? So with that also too, same thing on the form, is our eating habits. What are we doing, that, that what did we do before the holidays that may felt good for us and want to get back into? Did you eat too much chocolate like I did? Did you have too many tamales like I did? Too many good stuff, I call it. That only comes around once a year, so you have to eat it all, get out of your system. Well, that's how I rationalize what I did. So where are you right now in your eating habits Versus where you want to get to before the holidays. Okay, so again, these are all questions for you to answer on your own. Okay, and how do we how do we set ourselves goals? And why are, why are goals important? Why are goals important? Why do you want to have a standard to kind of hit? 
So you get into the routine. It helps you motivate into routine. If I want, if for me, if I want to lose another, I lost uh, game five, I want to lose another one or two pounds and maintain that for one, two. How do I maintain my routine? You get to my healthy weight at that point, maintain that. Okay? Once you've gone through that, do you figure out where you are, your level and, and score, your scale of eating, exercise, and motion, and exactly what routines do you actually have now? You may have been able to follow through your routine through the holidays. It may happen in to. I do workout group, as people know. I'm every morning at 5.30, I get there at 5.15, do my warm-up, wake up at 4.30, do my stretch before I go. At that point, that's my routine. People go, how do you do that? Because I do it every day, five days a week. But if I miss it, if I miss a day or a couple days or if I'm on vacation, I get back and I'm like, this is not going to feel good for about four or five days, and I'll get back into it. If you stop your routine, you're in you you're in you for a while, say two or three weeks, what happens is, your lack of routine becomes your routine, your habit. So to get back to routine, it's not going to be comfortable. You're going to be grouchy. You're going to be tired. You're going to be a little bit uncomfortable to get to better health in your state. Our bodies have to be stressed to cause a change in our body, in good or bad. I'd rather stress myself in a good way, the body can get healthier and then maintain a healthier state. It just takes time. Does that make sense why you want to be uncomfortable? If you don't, say for example, you want to go for a walk, right? I don't want to walk. Say your goal is to walk half an hour a day. You want to start maybe about 10, 15 minutes, and it's going to feel probably sore in the legs, maybe sore in the back, might be a little tired in the feet. Is that normal? Yes. We have to get build up our routine to get to that 30 minutes, then maybe 45, maybe an hour. But it takes time for a body to adjust Sometimes being uncomfortable, get to healthier your state. So my job as a chiropractor is help people get there and make sure they understand feeling soreness, being uncomfortable, is a good thing. How would that, how would that affect you? How would you be uncomfortable if you had to change your eating habits? What would you, what would you feel comfortable? How would that work for you? Would you feel like you're hungry sometimes? Yes. I do. I do. So I go, okay, I didn't, I didn't, for me, I like to maybe do a fast a couple times a week and not have breakfast. Horrible, right? Horrible. No, it's part of our lives. Can we do little things here and there to test our body and maybe not eat the foods that we want to eat to get the healthier state? Be uncomfortable means sometimes you might be a little tired. Okay? But really, listen to your body too. If you're tired, are you doing enough things to also hydrate? Have enough supplements in your body to eat the right foods? If we're going to stress our body physically especially, we may need more nutrients, more hydration, keep our body from causing injury too. Make sure we avoid that. Another part of what we want to talk about is when we improve our overall health, and we talk about being uncomfortable, how do we start a routine of eating properly? Again, you may have this ready too. I put up here, you can see this on the board here. On the board here is how I sometimes will log food to see what I want to do, okay? My biggest downside, my kryptonite, my thing I love the most is french fries. You guys like, does everyone like french fries? Huh? Huh? Yes. Yes. Okay. French fries. The American diet. Everything comes with french fries. You want a second of french fries, okay? So my thing is, if I have, I'm going to call it, I'll, I'll use it over here. I'll put F for french fries, okay? Okay, here, if I have that, for example, uh, French fries, fries, okay, if I have that, for example, on Monday, have it on Wednesday, have it on Friday, for me, that's way too much. Yeah. Way too much French fries. Does that, do I have one French fry? No, I don't know what it's called French fries. You have to have at least maybe like a handful or a couple of handfuls. Just give it, right? Yes. I have a question. What is the difference between the fries, French fries and made at home and go to Good. Go to a store or restaurant, right? Yeah. The biggest difference is the oils. So how how do you it's better than the home? Home is better because you're going to use better oils than they would at the restaurant. The oils you use at the restaurant are meant 
They're called omega-6 fatty acids. They cause inflammation. They slow down your digestion system. They cause problems in your body. Anytime you have oils at a restaurant or a fast food plate especially, they use very cheap oil that doesn't break down your body. Also, you use at home, which would be very light oils, your own seasoning too would be a lot better for your body. If you bought frozen french fries, it's better to do them at home than it would be getting, the fr getting fresh fries at a, at a store or restaurant. You could bake them. Yeah, exactly. You can bake them at home. You don't have to go to separate them in Greece and fry the whole thing. You can bake them at home. In general, does everyone agree if you cook at home, it's healthier than eating out? Yes. All right. We we would make our foods better at home than eating out. Okay. And for my son, that would be that does not include buying getting a pizza somewhere, bringing it home. That doesn't include that. That doesn't work. It's not a way to rationalize it. Okay. But making food at home is always better. But people want to spend the time, spend the energy. Sometimes it's cheaper to get other stuff too. But and and, and realize and again, rule well, of thumb is. If you put more effort into your foods, it's better for you. Okay, question? Okay, good. Distraction, distraction over there. Okay. If you put more pepper? I love pepper. Oh, I do it with the salt. I, I, salt and, and salt has, has a bad connotation. Salt is not horrible for you, but when you add salt to everything, right. just for flavor, it's an issue. Right. I use paper, uh, pepper as flavor. That's my mm -hmm. time, my flavor. Pepper is a normal mineral. It's easy on your body. Is it healthy? I don't know. It's a mineral. It's it's it basically you want to call it a rock form. It's rock. We need minerals in our body, right? Minerals, not just vitamins. Using that, I would get minerals in your body for flavor that has no effect on your heart, your blood pressure. Because that a salt would be with too much salt. So can I do? Can myself? Can I cut out maybe one French fry a week? For maybe a couple weeks. I mean, not one French fry, one serving of French fries a week, <laughs> one serving per week to make my my body a little healthier. Probably, right? Again, self control. Feel a little comfortable. Okay. Instead of a French fry as as a side at a restaurant or or a fast food, what else can I get? What's that? A vegetable. A vegetable, exactly. A potato, a meat potato fries. Meat potato fries instead. Still, still fried per se. I get a side salad. Maybe, maybe some, maybe a small soup. You know, something a little bit healthier over time. Again, as you, if you want to do a chart like this, you can. Okay, I like, to, I like to see things, to learn things. So I do charts. We go, okay, what did I eat this week? I ate three French fries. All right, let's cut that out. If I cut one out. At that point, over time. Can I live off of having one serving of french fries a week? Can I live? Yes. Yes, right? <laughs> I can live. It just takes that changing of your habits. Who likes soda here? A lot of people like sodas. Okay. I used to love Diet Coke. I used to love them. Until I read what was in it. Each Diet Coke can has six tablespoons of sugar. Tablespoons. Tablespoons. Not, not teaspoons. Tablespoons. So it took me because of taste, taste buds, right? Our taste buds kind of dictate how we want, we want to feel good with it. Our taste buds. It took me about a month to get off the of Diet Cokes. Once I, once I was off for about maybe a month and a half, two months, went to go have a simple one, didn't taste right. My taste bud has changed to not want that, to not make it taste good. So can we, can we give ourselves a chance, give ourselves time to change our taste buds and our, and our, I want to call it psychology, not to require our routine of eating foods that are not good for us. And again, pick your, pick your poison. What do you like? All right? Any questions about that? But by logging your food, by having a log, allows you to realize what am I really doing? What can I cut out? Once I've gone through French fries, I think, okay, can I cut something else out over time to make myself a little healthier? When you eat at home, do you have a certain foods that you eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner that you normally like? Most people do. Okay? 
And when you have that, great, because it allows your body to stay healthy. Who likes chicken? I do. I love chicken. Okay? I go to the store once a week, and when I can, and buy one of those cooked chickens already. That may last me three meals. It cost me about seven, eight dollars. But allows you to have enough food in your fridge to make with other things. If you can be creative enough to make two, three meals out of one chicken. Easy. But finding ways that you can do to have a healthier diet will help not only how you feel, also physically, but also emotionally. How does foods affect you emotionally in your head? How does that work? Make you feel good. Make you, some, some foods make us feel good short term. Some foods make us feel good long term. Who likes Doritos? Who likes chips? Fritos. Fritos. I'm a Ruffles person. If I'm going to get a bag of Ruffles, I'm going to eat the whole bag. <laughs> the problem is I'm going to feel good for maybe five minutes. Also, I'm like, oh, this is why I don't eat them very often. I have amnesia once in a while. But can we have those foods... How, what benefit are ruffles? What's the health benefit? Just about zero. <laughs> no protein, no protein, no fiber, all, sh all oils and also carbs. Both. Fantastic. So can we cut things out that we don't want to have at home that are not going to tempt us when we're hungry? We start eating things that are healthier for us when we're at home that are better for us. So once once holidays were over, I think that Tuesday after the holidays, took like all the big. We had like a box in our pantry of junk food, right in the trash. <laughs> Done. All the chocolates, I was in the freezer, threw half of them away. I them gone. I love tamales, but I don't can have so much. Not the not the best thing. For then question about logging your foods or your beverages. Also, same thing too. When you do that, you never realize we can cut out, we can keep. Right? Any questions yet? And again, the, the physical, the chemical, the neurological, the hormonal benefits of eating better foods, your body produces less stress hormones. What are stress hormones? Cortisol, catecholamines. Keep your body under stress. <coughs> when we're tired, when we're stressed, what do we want to eat? Ice cream, ruffles, french fries. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all do. That's me. Because we sugar feeds your stress hormones. Healthier foods feed your hormones that help you relax, your gut endorphins, your serotonin. So knowing that alone, okay, if I want to feel less stressed, I have to control what I eat, be uncomfortable right now, realize it can help my body long term. My body physically, chemically, neurologically, hormonally. Okay, that's the benefit of being in a routine that is healthier for you. Again, this is the goal of this class is to make sure we have a good mindset going into this year to make our body learn to stay healthy, maintain good habits as we build them, to not be comfortable, make them stay there for the whole year. What's it take to change our physiology in our body? How long does it take normally? So once we once start a routine, to, for our body to see that as a new standard routine of eating exercise, what's it take sometimes? What's, what's a good number for you? What's that? 26 days. I like 26 days. On average, the experts I talk to, the experts I have, I do a podcast, I interview a lot of experts in healthcare, nutritionists, things like that. It takes about three months. Three months. Three months. Your change physiologically yeah. to actually not want french fries as much, or ruffles, or diet coats. I know, ridiculous in my thinking. Yeah. But can we do enough to stay healthy and learn? Give yourself, again, three months as a rule of thumb, if I give myself three months of doing this, I'm going to feel better. Just physiologically as a human being. But it takes a while, not 21 days, sometimes 26 days yeah, is good. I'm just thinking of a habit. Yeah, you have to have a habit. It gives enough time for the habit to change not only physically, our body to change, but also psychologically, so we want to do it. We want to be that. We want to be in that state all the time. Okay. Also, we talked about two, changing things around. And just to be boring, to get to where we want to get health-wise, start cutting out the stretch fries for you. Maybe I'll put here too. Um, I'll put R for ruffles. Okay? Ruffles. And ice cream. Okay? I'll put I for ice cream. Okay? 
है so here, if I have, instead of french fries on Monday, I'll have ruffles on Tuesday, and I'll have ice cream on Tuesday, because this ice cream is still good, I'm going to have ice cream again on Wednesday. Ruffles, I didn't finish the whole bag, so I'm going to have the ruffles again on Thursday, and because it's all ice cream, I'm going to have it again on Friday. We slowly cut these things out in our diet as we go through the week, and go, the first two weeks, or the first week, I cut out maybe one french fries, one french fry serving. Second week, I cut out the second, sec second french fry serving. Now move on to maybe ruffles the third week. And then maybe the, the uh, fourth week, I'll cut out one ice cream. So again, you give yourself time to feel good, to get feeling good by being uncomfortable over time as you cut these foods that don't benefit you physically hormonally, neurologically, or emotionally. You know, it's like, it's time. It's time. We're going to have, is it okay once once in a while to have, have a second serving of french fries? It's not going to kill you, but not making it happen all the time. That's one thing, one thing I talk to <coughs> nutritionists is, some people will fall off the wagon one weekend. They go out with friends, they have fun. You don't have to start over. Okay, now I'm get back on track on Monday. I have a bad day, I get back on track the next day. Don't don't beat yourself up. Any questions yet? These are things we know, right? We write them down, that point we now we're not committed to, but we can see it. A lot of people learn by writing, not just by talking. Saying they want to do something. I'm thinking about this. I had a guy come in today and goes, yeah, think about joining the gym, like, so what's stopping you? Nothing. Like, okay, you have till tomorrow to join the gym. I know which one you want to join. When I see you on one on Friday, make sure you have that thing taken care of. He goes, really? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be your, I'm going to be your peer pressure. Because some people need that, not on here, not on this forum. They need support. How does support work? Okay? You're there to help them get their goal. They might not like you all the time, but your, your, your support, I'm going to put that over here, one thing we talked about is support. A support group or person is supportive. Okay, What does supportive mean? You're not going to go, you know what, what's wrong with that set of french fries? It's only french fries. It's a, it's a good carb, whatever. Okay, You want someone that's going to help you reach your goals, not, not distract you from your goals. We all have that friend that goes, hey, let's go do this. I'm like, yeah, not today. And I'm uh, like, they're not, they're, they're the, the opposite of being supportive. So having a support group or a coach or someone you're accountable to, accountable to, allows you to go, if I don't watch what I eat or how much exercise, they're going to come after me. They're going to, they're going to want to be a little bit, they're going to be upset. So for my patients, I'm their support to realize they need to start doing more things get themselves healthy. That's, that's important to me. Finding your support, maybe a person or a group of people, allows you to, to reach your goals and maintain them. My, my workout group in the morning, if someone texts in the morning at 5 o'clock, goes, I'm not going to make it today. You're, I said, we, we text in the group, you're already up. He wants to come by and pick you up. Because you're already, you're already up. So we want to be supportive. Sometimes you don't like it, but being supportive allows them to stay healthier. Okay. Next part is how do we figure out and improve our exercise routine? Okay. Number one thing on here. Okay. Either way, either way. No way in here. You just leave it all. Leave it all. It doesn't bother me. I'm good. We talk about improving your exercise routine. What do you like to do? Dance. Good. Fantastic. That's how you're going to exercise. When we do what we want to do to exercise, then we're going to do it. That's a good start. Sign up for a class, and if you have to pay money for the class, you will be there. Yeah. It costs you money. When you, when you pay for a class, any class at all, what happens is you pay, you pay attention. Real simple rule. When you pay, you pay attention. People join. People want to hire a coach, sometimes a trainer, whatever it might be, because by hiring a coach, you're paying them to make sure you exercise. You're going to show up, because you're going to see that, that come out of your, your account every time you, you work out. That gives you more quality, makes you show up. 
but also when you pay sometimes, it gives you, it tells you exactly what to do. When you eat this food, here's your diet plan for the week, here's your exercise plan for the day. By having that, that coach allows you to actually get that efficient workout and diet plan so you don't have to waste any time. You don't think about it, you just show up, you do it. Part of it. It's all it all works together. But can we figure out what you like to have a patient who likes to swim? So he's gonna have a joint gym that actually has a swimming pool to swim every time. That, that gets him motivated to get his body better. That's the plan. By the way, like if you like to walk, walk. And find find a way to build that routine. So if I'm gonna walk or swim or dance, can I start going once a week? Then twice a week. Yeah, three times a week. Yes. The key, the key to that is discipline. You have to have discipline. You no, know, you know, you don't have it. You do it once or twice a week, and then that's it. You start to get it. And you can, because you're gonna be uncomfortable, unless you have the self-control discipline, you're gonna stop. Why do most gyms, and a lot of them are doing this now, they have you sign up for a full year at the gym. They want it. You want to come for a year because you don't get to show up for probably just the first month. <laughs> What helps your discipline? By having a support group. By coming here to this center, the Gibson Center, because these people here, as you guys know, are more supportive to help you stay in the group. If someone doesn't show up that that you're part of a group in here, you're going to want to call them, hey, what's going on? Yeah, we didn't see you for a couple weeks. What's up? Okay. Having the discipline allows you, and you may, you may have self-discipline, meaning outside discipline or outside support help. So having both allows you to maintain that routine. We, we all need that. We all have good days and bad days. If you're like, it just doesn't feel right to me. And when you show up, when you, but when you have good discipline, it's a building process. I work with a lot of kids, a lot of high school kids that want to become a chiropractor or someone in healthcare. I tell them by just having a job, you're building up work ethic to get into a career you want to do. Any job. But having a job allows you to show up, work, and go home. Once you get into healthcare or a, or a higher education, it takes a lot more discipline. But if you have none to start with, there's nothing to build on top of. Does that make sense? Discipline. It's 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 a I want to call it a muscle that you have to build up over time. Compared to months, weeks, and years. Sometimes decades for some people. Alright? Next one here too. Over time, if I like to walk, okay, if you like to walk, how can you start maybe 15 minutes? Once you've done 15 minutes for maybe a week or so or two weeks, with my patients, for example, I'll go, let's go to this try 20. Once I hear them like, 20 feels pretty easy, we're going to 25. We're going to 30. You have to find a baseline, and from there, that baseline 15 minutes, then build up five every week. And maybe three times a week to start, that was good to you, and go to four times a week. So having the frequency, it, so, so one thing I call the improvement, right? Improvement, I'll call this improvement. Or like discipline, how do we improve our body? Okay, improve it. For me, to talk about exercise is equal to intensity. There you go. Intensity plus frequency. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, so that means intensity for me, for example, with running would be or walking, increasing the eh, it's a target intensity. Maybe add with the intensity, increase it, a hill. Okay, add a hill or add some incline to your walking, not just flat, but also maybe a hill a little bit. Okay, Three blocks more hit blocks. I don't know. That's maybe more. Walk, walk in a big circle. Increase it would be the time. Okay? Increase the time of how much you walk. So having those two things increase over time will work. If you do weights, for example, or light weights at home, increasing the weight. Yep. Increase weight when you're either walking and at home too. So allowing your body to slowly become stressed in a good way keeps your body healthy and gets your body healthier. You have to stress our body to make our body change and adapt. Adapt in a good way by increasing your improving 
by increasing your intensity and frequency. Questions? I would say we had a class here a couple of years ago that was at a decent time, like 10, 30 or so. Ah, uh, when everyone's working. Got it. <laughs> but it was here because there are these bathrooms. Yeah, okay. And we're talking people with a lot of physical conditions. And we'd go out the door and walk up this path. Nice. And each week, we could hardly do it the first week. Yeah. Each week we'd go a little further. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And by having a group setting like that, yeah. Just that even a couple you? of free people yeah, or, but or more. Yeah. Just more than two. And then we came back and we had to stretch before mm -hmm. and we had to stretch after we got back. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing that was nice in here and there were bathrooms. Because we're all <laughs> and there's seniors that had real problems. Even even just young, us but younger it's convenient not seniors. Here. <laughs> but and also too for you talked about too, is routine, right? We have routines. You had it every every week a routine. Allowed you to know that this time at 10 30, we're going to go for a walk. They have it actually here at 9 now, something, Nine. but that's too early. No, no, but it's something to where they have routines here. That's why I love the center. It allows you to learn over time, get healthy, and stay healthy. And by having that support group and that routine, you're going to want to go. And when you when you talk to someone you're walking, does that make the walking easier? Oh, that's right. That's right? And, and people you don't even know start walking. Yeah, yeah. You can't help it. Yeah, unless you're in LA or something, they won't even talk to you over there. But here in Upland, they'll, they'll, they'll be friendly to you. And, uh, and having that, when someone is in a community of walkers, of swimmers, of someone who wants to lift weights, or just in that that community, are they usually friendly? Usually are. When someone works out and wants to exercise and have that routine going on, it gives you good endorphins, and it makes you feel good. So you want to come back to that community all the time. Okay, more energy, but it takes time though to get to that routine. Again, sometimes up to three months, so your body can feel better and stay better. Up to three months, everyone's different. Yes. Well, also in what you were describing, uh, there's a common goal, so that helps you with your personal motivation. I think mm -hmm. if you're not having to be, you know, going along on yourself and rely on self-discipline, which and it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Getting back to that accountability. Exactly. Accountability, discipline, and support allows you to get that goal very a lot easier because it seems like you're the only one. Yeah. We're all working on it together. And when I work out with my group sometimes, we're always wondering each other, hey, keep going, keep on going, allows you to see that benefit. That's why you don't do marathons on your own. You don't do competitive things on your own. You do them because you're in the group training, group setting, the support's there. The support's phenomenal when you're in a, a good, healthy support. All right? Last one here, too. Can you do your exercises, simple things at home, like just stretching, like this, for example? Is this movement? Can we do this at home? If you take two water balls at home while we're sitting there, between, how long, if you watch normal TV, the show. How many? How long are the commercials during one hour? In one hour? One or more? It, I'm, I'm going up to about eight, to eight, between ten to twenty minutes per hour are commercials. Right. Per hour. So I can get a full workout in in one hour watching my favorite show. I can do during commercials. I can do five of these. I can do five of these. Take a water bottle, do five of these, and do five of these. Just water bottles. Stretch bands are too too clumsy. Hurt yourself, like rubber banding yourself in the eye or something. No, no, none of that. <coughs> Dangerous. Water bottle, cans of soup. Chicken soup, about chicken soup. Take a chicken soup, soup can, and five of these, five of these. Next commercial, what can you do? Five of these, five of these. Okay? And slowly figure out a routine to move your body more. And I have people take a broomstick. Take a broomstick. Come back. Five of these. And slowly move instead of just sit there and just watch the commercial. Because you probably already bought it or don't want it. You've seen the commercial five times already. And you can remember it. Probably the commercials memorized like I do. See them in your head. But that thing is we move enough, frequently enough, change intensity and change your frequency. Your body over time gets slowly healthy. Give yourself three months, 
of changing your diet, changing your exercise routine to get and stay healthy. So by, if you're just starting fresh from nothing, by January, February, March, by the middle end of March, you should be in a good routine. Should be. Should be. And is it being healthier or are you also losing weight too? Back to the okay. first we talked about in the outline is you're, so for some people, and so don't, don't worry about it, weight is a good is a good way to standardize how healthy you are. Because when you're when you're not the weight you want to be, everyone's everyone's at their own weight, whatever what you want to be, okay, what am I not doing or doing too much of that's not aligned to be where I want to be. And for guys, it's what what belt buckle am I on? <laughs> for guys. And now, where, where am I today? Uh, I'm just sucking in. I always tell my wife during the holidays, she used different detergents during the holiday church to wash the laundry because all my clothes shrink. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Every holiday, everything shrinks. And by January, February, hopefully, hopefully, I can get back to those pants. And I don't know what it is. Maybe Costco or Sam's has different stuff they sell during the holidays. All right. Any questions, my friends? It's kind of giving you an idea using the form, using this, understanding this, and you guys all get this. How do I start what I want to start tomorrow, today, for 10 minutes? If I sit there and watch my TV show, whatever it is, how do I move for 10 minutes? Then add another five minutes. And if, I, if you want to even log your exercise to like this, what did I do today? How much did I spend? I realize you might be sore, might be comfortable. Fantastic. When you're sore and comfortable from exercising, you need to know how to then you need to figure out how to stretch too. Unless unless we know what's unless we wake something up when we're exercising, how do we know what's injured? How do know what's sore? And then how do we stretch? How do we strengthen? So my talks, I'm not sure what the talk is next month. My talks from now on will be back pain exercise, leg pain exercise, shoulder exercise, headache exercise, blah blah blah. So go through those, you might and on the form too has a link to our YouTube channel, our workshop playlist on YouTube, that has all our previous talks about those how to exercise, how to find your routine, and build that routine for you. All right. Any questions? Well, when yes. you mentioned the cold, the chicken, the rotisserie. Yes. Okay. Smart and Final huh? has that are already cooked, but they're cold. Okay. And okay. they're in the refrigerator, at the end of the oh. refrigerated section above, where they have, uh, where they lower the prices on got it, got it, got it. at the end. Is it cut up ready, or is no, it still it's, a piece? It's, it's, what they do is they come mm -hmm. in, I think, already cooked, and then they got eat it. them and put them in those uh, carts in front. Yeah, yeah. But before they put them in the carts, they are right, the ones that, don't go in those carts that are already cold. They have there. Smart. And then on Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday afternoon or something, they put them down the price to like three dollars. Oh, perfect. Eleven cents or something. Huh. Yeah. And that's, that's why they're easy. smart. Final. It, they're in the refrigerated where all the meats are in the yeah. back. It's on one. At the one up here on Mountain. Yeah. In Foothill. That is a, the, the section is on the far. That's a big one too. There's one off of baseline in Carnelian too. Yes, yes. I don't know if they okay, have, if okay. they even have rotisserie chicken. Okay, I'll check and see. But the one there does, and I, I nice. Whatever other smart the finals. Yeah. They have, if they have. That's them, why they're they smart. They always have cold. Well, they know. Yeah. And it's always uh, they reduce the price when nice. it's cold. Oh. Never been on those carts. Nice. Never sat all day heated. Yeah. They were already cold, and they're just nice big fat in there. It's so simple. And you take it apart, and all the bones, you can make wonderful soup out of every bit of it. I, and maybe because I'm getting older, I love just chicken. I take chicken broth and put everything in there. Make my own chicken, uh, beans, whatever I want to put in, carrots, onions, whatever it is. All, all your ends and all your vegetables. In yes. I, for me, because I'm, I'm the dad of my house, I shop at the back of the fridge. For all the stuff that no one, because all my kids don't, and my wife doesn't like leftovers. So you know, leftovers first, and I work my way to the front. <laughs> Have to, as a dad. <laughs> so much food gets wasted, right? Yes. I don't like to waste food. No. I like to eat everything. That's still that's still good to eat. But I, I, that, it's it's having things like that. People like this. Hence, hence the center that know things that I wouldn't know. Why not share the information? Why not 
Why, why reinvent the wheel? Yes, ma'am. How about those chickens was unhealthy? Why? I don't know. I thought they added you know, to them to make them last longer or something. Not necessarily, but it's something to where they're healthier parts of chicken, but in general has a good protein. Better than red meat, and this is common knowledge now, better than pork. So if I'm going to have a protein, that's going to be, it's going to be chicken. And th those are phenomenal choices, yes. How about turkey? Oh, turkey is phenomenal too. Turkey, you got to watch for turkey because when turkey is processed, they use a lot of salt. And it is turkey, is, is chicken club. Not that I know. But don't put me on the, on the, on the court. I don't know. Don't put me on the, on the panel. You know? All I know is that it's easy to get chicken. It's the easy that, that again, I know of. You can buy and use for two, three meals for anything you want to make. I'll make a bean soup out of it with some some just some black beans and some chicken. Boom, done. Again, simple guy. My wife, they want to go out, then I'm like, you guys go ahead. Even drinks too. Who pays? How much is a soda now in a restaurant? A soda. At least four dollars. Three, four dollars now, right? I go I go to store, I go to a restaurant, I want water. They haven't charged for water yet. Water's still free, right? <laughs> All right? So it's still free as far as I know. If I go to my kids, they want to have a soda microwave. Here's that $3. It costs like a half a cent. Oh, my gosh. Really? Yes. It costs a half a cent. Yeah, to make. To make. To, to, I'm a fountain drinks. Right. Fountain drinks. I go, take it out of your college fund. And call you three dollars, whatever it is. Too. And it has all those tablespoons of sugar. And again, I don't like the. I keep things very simple. If it's a good protein, it's a good protein. If it's a good, good, I do can uh, kidney beans, black beans, garbanzo beans. Boom, easy. I try to get no salt if possible. Even Walmart sells no salt beans now, not extra salt. And one thing, and simple things again, we talked about before too. Go to the go to a store, turn the can around. And see how much salt's in there. How much sugar's in there. What does it have? Is there a better choice that now, now being 2023, is not even more expensive than everything else, too? The same price. No salt added tomatoes. I do cut up tomatoes and can, whatever it is. Simple. Is it forever? I could survive like a middle of the jungle with all my canned foods. Canned chicken, whatever it is. <laughs> I want some that. I mix the vegetables. Yeah, perfect, easy. Put them in a rinser, boom, you're done, ready to go. Does tomato, does to, do tomatoes inflame our brains? No. They do not. They have a light, it says light I think. That is anti-inflammatory. Again, look, look, do your own research. I eat tomatoes because I like tomatoes. I eat them raw, canned, steamed, fried, whatever. My family doesn't like tomatoes at all, which is perfect for me because I'll like, get all the tomatoes. So that's my touch. And for men, mm -hmm. tomatoes are, especially the cooked ones, mm -hmm. are the best for men for their prostate. Mm -hmm. There we go. See? Again, knowledge over here. Yeah. But it's, it's something to where we have things that are in our in our cabinet that keeps us healthy. Again, I, I just can't. It's soda is the biggest thing. Why pay $3 for a soda? I don't get it. That's just me. But the kids, the kids, right? What do you think? All right, I ate the lunch. I ate my lunch now before I go back to work. Any questions? Anything else? One more thing. Can I think? Yes. Uh, and then the food that you eat, according to the color, is that for you? In other words, you said tomatoes, it's good for that. Greens are good for something else. Fiber, yep. Right, so if you follow that, would that be? It's a, be it's a better choice to choose. Yeah. You know, find the food that you like that are healthy for you. You have to do research, but brighter foods are going to be better for you in general. Yeah. And again, I'm sorry, um, leaf, leafy greens are good. We talk about vegetables, brighter foods too. But realize, again, how, does, how do we lose weight? What's the number one thing? Is how many calories we intake. What's your calorie count per day? Fries have a lot of calories, but very little nutritional benefit. Ruffles, ice cream, same, same thing too. So they're high calories. But no benefit. If if I if my body naturally burns about two thousand calories a day, two thousand calories a day, and if I eat four thousand calories, if I eat four thousand calories a day, am I going to gain weight or lose weight? I'm going to gain weight, or I can work out for three hours and kill myself. And no, keeping things simple. I'm going to eat less. I'm going to eat. 
foods that have less calories to decrease my, my overall body weight. When I was a kid, I grew up in down, I grew up in West LA, went to school in downtown LA. We used to live or we used to school near the original Tommy's. Chili burgers. <laughs> Original Tommy's. Went there about a month ago. Killed myself the next day, but it was great. It killed my stomach the next day. But we used to go there to eat three chili burgers after our workouts. After our swim workouts. When I was in high school. Now that's not going to happen. None of that stuff. So if we can keep it very simple, watch how much calories we eat per day, and lower that versus how much we burn, which is about 2,000 calories a day, we're going to lose weight no matter what. All right. If you want to get stronger, what's simple if you want to get stronger on your exercise routine is increase your frequency and your intensity of your workouts. People that work out as a, as a religion and, and want to be a trainer or stay healthy and train for triathlons and marathons, the simple thing is if you want to, if you want to get stronger, lift more weight. Run more. Walk more. Increase your frequency and intensity. Improve what you do. Simple, simple things. But calorie intake, base and everything, just throws out the door, calorie intake, and how are you going to lose weight? Good, good. And, yes? And there's more detail on foods tomorrow at 10.30 by IL. What's IL? Tell us about She's IL. She's a nurse. Okay. And she's specializing in very natural, she's from Israel. Yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah. Okay. She's okay. from Israel, and she does an excellent program. Nice. Once a month on Thursday, it's at 10.30 to 11.30. Like that. So that's a good way to find out, again, more detailed and nutrition. And it goes into really a lot of detail. Perfect. She's very knowledgeable in that. She used to be a Kaiser nurse, and now she's specializing. And when we have knowledge, we're going to listen more, we're going to educate ourselves more, we're going to follow through more. That adds our discipline and our self-control. Cool. All right, my friends, I'll see you guys next month, same time, same, same back channel, whatever it is. Okay. Thank, Thank you guys you for much. listening. Hope you're entertained.